Hello CCPS friends, it's uh, Miss Miller and I am here again today to do another literary art lesson with you and uh, today we are going to do one that's all about Earth Day. Now we have been doing outside art lessons and using art lessons that have recycled materials and we've been doing that all this month kind of uh, kind of leading up to our Earth Day projects that we are doing this week. Um, I normally get to do like a really cool uh, Earth Day project with you in school, so I hope that you enjoy this one instead. Um, and so today, the book I'm going to be reading is Eric Carle's The Tiny Seed. Now we learned about Eric Carle at the beginning of this year when we read The Artist Who Painted a Blue Horse. And uh, we talked about how he not only writes his books, so he's the author, but also that he is the illustrator. And you can kind of see with the cover here that his style is painted paper. So we're going to do a little bit of painted paper ourselves today. And I'm going to be showing you how to make paint without paint at home. So um, let's get into our art uh, our art story today. Let me pause the video real quick. Alrighty. Now, this is Eric Carl and the Tiny Seed. Um, and I got this book and it is all about how uh, seeds work and the life cycle of our plants. Um, so let's get started. It is autumn and a strong wind is blowing. It blows flower seeds high in the air and carries them far across the land. One of these seeds is tiny, smaller than any of the others. Will it be able to keep up with the others? And where are they all going? One of the seeds flies higher than the others, and up, up it goes. It flies too high, and the sun's hot rays burns it up. But the tiny seed sails on with the others. Can you see the tiny seed? There it is. And another seed lands on a tall, icy mountain where the ice never melts and the seed cannot grow. The rest of the seeds fly on, but the tiny seed does not go as fast as the others. Now they fly over the ocean and one seed falls into the water and drowns. And the others sail on with the wind, but the tiny seed does not go as high as the others. So there's the seed that fell. And here's our tiny seed. There's Mr. Fish. One seed drifts down into the desert. Now it's hot and dry and the seed can't grow. Now the seed is flying, the tiny seed is flying very low. But the wind pushes it on with the others. So here's our tiny seed. Finally, the wind stops and the seeds fall gently down on the ground. A bird comes by and eats one seed. The tiny seed is not eaten. It's so small that the bird does not see it. Now it's winter and after a long trip, the seeds settle down and they look just as if they are going to sleep in the earth and the snow falls and covers them like a soft white blanket. And the hungry mouse that also lives in the ground eats the seed for his lunch, but the tiny seed lies very still and the mouse does not see it. Sorry, my cat's meowing. Bees, stop. Shh, shh, shh. 
No. Now it's spring, and after a few months of snow, the snow has melted. And it is really spring. The birds fly by. The birds fly by, and the sun shines, and the rain falls, and the seeds grow so round that they start, and full that they start to burst open a little. Now they're not seeds anymore. They're plants. First, they send roots down into the earth, and then their little stems and leaves begin to grow up towards the sun and the air. And there's another plant that grows much faster than the new little plants. It's a big fat weed, and it takes all the sunlight and the rain away from one of the new little plants. And that little plant dies. But the tiny seed hasn't begun to grow yet. Will it be too late? Hurry, tiny seed. But finally, it starts to grow into a little plant, too. So here's our tiny seed right down here. And now he's a little plant. The warm weather also brings children out to play, and they, too, have been waiting for the sun in springtime. One child doesn't see the plants, and he runs along and up. He breaks one, and now it can't grow anymore. Here's our tiny plant right here. He's still doing okay. The tiny plant that grew from the tiny seed is growing fast, but its neighbor grows even faster. And before the tiny plant has three leaves, the other plant has seven. And look, a bud, and now even a flower. But what's happening? First there are footsteps, but then the shadow looms over them, and then a hand reaches down and breaks off the flower. The boy has picked the flower to give to a friend. It's summer, and now the tiny plant from that tiny seed is all alone and it grows on and on and it doesn't stop. The sun shines on it and the rain waters it and it has many leaves and it grows taller and taller and it's taller than the people. It's taller than the trees and it's taller than the houses. And now the flower. And now a flower grows on it. And people have come from far and near to look at this flower. It's the tallest flower they have ever seen. It's a giant flower. That's one big flower. All summer long, the birds and the bees and the butterflies come visiting. And they've never seen such a big and beautiful flower. And now it's autumn again. And the days grow shorter, and the nights grow cooler. And the wind carries the yellow and red leaves past the flowers. And some petals drop from the giant flower. And they sail along with the bright leaves over the land and down to the ground. And the wind blows harder. And the flower has lost almost all its petals. And it sways and it bends away from the wind, but the wind grows stronger and it shakes the flower. And once more the wind shakes the flower, but this time the flower seeds pods open. And out come tiny seeds that quickly sail away on the wind. The end. Anything that's going to happen to the seeds? It's going to start all over. We'll have seeds that travel all over. Some will make it, some won't. Just like the with Tiny Seed and his friends. And then they'll turn into plants and eventually beautiful flowers all over again. And that's the life cycle of a flower. Now today we're going to create our own Eric Carle
painted paper flowers, but we're going to use recycled materials since it's Earth Day. So let me get those for you real quick. All right, so what you're going to need is you're going to need some newspaper, some markers, uh, some pair of scissors, some water and some paint brushes if you have them. If you don't, we can also use our fingers because these markers are washable. Um, a glue stick and I'll show you some extra stuff in just a second if you don't have markers at home. So the first thing you're going to have to do is I'm going to set this up to the side for a second. Is that we are going to need to cut out some shapes from our newspaper. Now I just have a newspaper here that's kind of left over. If you don't have newspaper, any paper that you're recycling will work. It would be perfect. You can use cardboard that you're recycling or um, you know cardboard box from cereal boxes would work. Um, you could use paper that's already been printed and, and people are throwing it away. Anything like that will work. I'm using newspaper because we recycle newspaper at our house after we're done looking through for coupons. So uh, for this we're going to draw our shapes. Um, now you can do some circles um, like this or you can do a f kind of a wavy line so we have like more of a flower petal situation. or. Um, and then you want them of different sizes. So if I have that circle, I want a medium sized circle and a small circle. And then we want a leaf shape, remember, which is a smile line. And then a frown line on top or a rainbow line. And that's a leaf shape. Because see, we can have our leaf right here. And then we're going to need a stem. So a stem is going to be a large rectangle and we're going to want to cut all of those out. Now I've already pre-cut some newspaper out. Make sure when you're cutting that you're being careful and you have some adult supervision or using some um, kid scissors. So I have my stem here. I have my leaf and I have my multiple circles. Now you can do three, you can do four, however many you want. Now here's the cool part. Um, we're going to make our own watercolor paint. Yay! Um, now some of you might have watercolor at paint at home. If you want to use that, that's fine and dandy. It's fantastic. But if you don't, then that's okay too. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take this plastic plate that I have here. Now, with that, I'm just going to pick, you know, one circle. I may start with my middle, one of my middle circles here. And I'm going to move all of these over to the side. Okay. Now, on my plastic plate, I'm going to take those markers that I like. And I'm going to pick which color I want this to be. Now, since this is more of the middle, ooh, I think an orange would be really pretty, don't you think? And I'm actually going to color, not using this, the tip using the fat side over this plastic. Now when it's this shiny kind of plastic, it actually um, doesn't stick the, uh, uh, doesn't soak in. Um, you could also like plastic from a water bottle or um, Tupperware or anything like that would work as well. It's not going to stick to it because these are washable and they're water based. They're not like permanent markers. Um, these are washable and they're safe to use. And now this, this is the cool part. So taking some water. You can see I've already kind of used a little bit of my water here. It's kind of a blue color, but that's okay. It's still clean water. I'm going to do one drop, two drops, three drops. Remember, we're feeding our paintbrushes, making sure that they are happy paintbrushes. We don't want any sad paintbrushes. Everyone knows how to have happy paint brushes. And we mix those drops in. And look, now we have watercolor paint. Isn't that cool? Now I'm going to take this and I can paint right on my newspaper. Can you see how bright and colorful that is? 
That is just so awesome. And if you want a little bit more water, you know, kind of blend it out some, you can just put straight water on it, kind of like we would do with our papers at school. Now, for this other side, I want to show you a different trick. Are you ready for this? I'm going to flip this over here. Now, some people may not have markers at home. And if that's you, that's okay. Because you may have some of these spices in your spice rack. Now, you might be like, what are you talking about, Miss Miller? Well, sometimes when cooking, we add spices to it. Uh, our food to make them taste different and make them taste better and with these spices we can actually have color too so I'm going to show them to you in just a second all right so some of the spices I have um, and I just have three but there's some other ones that I don't have that you might have as well um, one is if you have any turmeric at home it is going to be this beautiful yellow orange color. If you have paprika, it's going to give a kind of a brownish red color. And vanilla extract will give you a brown color. And it also smells really good. So I'm going to use some of this turmeric here. And I'll show you how it works. You just put a little bit on your plate. You don't need a lot. You're going to take your paintbrush and a little bit of water. And we're just going to add some water to it. One drop, two drops, three drops. It's going to need more drops than our normal paint with the markers. And we're going to mix that up. Oops, needs a little bit more water. And it's going to be kind of like a paste. But we want it to not stick to our brush. I want it to stay on the plate. And then we can paint it on. And you can see it's giving this nice pretty yellow color to it. Now it's going to leave some of the turmeric on the top of it. Some of the spice. But once it's dry, you can take a paper towel or even your finger and rub some of it off just like that and it just leaves the yellow color isn't that cool and again if you don't have paint brushes at home just make sure your colors are happy by adding some water to it and I'm just doing that with my fingers and then I'm rubbing them around and kind of pushing down my paper not rubbing back and forth just kind of pushing it in there again I can do that with the turmeric as well I'm just pressing it on there. You do a little rubbing, but no rubbing back and forth like this. You just want to gently be gentle with it. This newspaper can fall apart on us. And then you would want to wash your hands in the water and then dry them with a paper towel. Okay. Now, you're going to color each one of these and then put them together and at the end we'll have a flower. So give me one second. Okay, so here you can see I have my um, stem and I have my leaf. And this one I decided to leave some of the parts out. Here I have my base of my flower. So this is going to be the first part of the flower. It's the biggest part. And I colored this with not only red marker, um, but also some of my paprika. So that's kind of how paprika looks. And then here's my second part of the flower. It's going to go on top. Here's my third. And I went a little extra crazy and did four. And that's that turmeric color. Isn't that pretty? It's so, so yellow. Love it. So now, all you need is your glue stick, handy dandy glue stick, and we are going to put this together. So I'm going to put some of my glue stick here at the top. You kind of want to wait until your papers are dry. Mine are mostly dry, so I'm going to go ahead and do this. I'm going to put that one down. I'll press down on it so it sticks. 
And then we'll put some more glue on this one. Put it on top just like that. There we go. Let's go with the next biggest one, which is purple. Add the purple. Remember, we go around the perimeter, which is going around the whole outside. And then we do just a little bit in the middle, not too much. Press, press, press. And we'll do our blue layer next. Perimeter. And inside. Very good, very good. Press, 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 press. And here is our yellow. And there we go. Now you can see I added some things on there for decorating with markers. So you can always go back once your paper's dry and kind of go back and add some details like so. Just like that. And I'm even going to take a brown this yellow and kind of add some dots so we have our seeds just like in the tiny seed with the flowers and they were able to fly away once the fall came once autumn came and there we go we have our painted paper flowers using recycled materials so I hope you guys enjoyed making this art project with me. I hope you enjoyed my book and reading it to you um, from Eric Carle. I, I love Eric Carle. He's a great author but also illustrator. And I hope you enjoyed making flowers together for Earth Day using recycled materials. Um, can't wait to see what yours look like if you want to send me a couple pictures I would love to see them hope you guys are having a wonderful day and I love and miss you all bye